Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We're glad you're back with us after a meal with your family and friends and loved ones. Uh, before we bring on our special guest, I want to remind all of you in ATP land, if you haven't already done so, please take out your cell phone and text the number, uh, sorry, the, the word truth and send it to the number 88. 202 88202. You'll be signed up for this and all of our content absolutely for free, and you'll get it on the palm of your hand every time we post a show. With that said, I want to bring on Robert Spencer. He's America's expert on jihad, and he's the expert on jihad around the world. He's the publisher uh, and editor and writer of not only Jihad Watch, but over two dozen books. He's got a new book out he's going to tell us about. Welcome back, Robert. Thanks, Barry. Good to see you. Same here, buddy. So let's start off with an article that uh, you've done some research on. Um, the U.S. has warned Israel that its attacks on Iran's nuclear program are, quote, counterproductive, according to the New York Times. And U.S. officials, they say, are warning Israel against attacking Iran and stopping the nuclear program. So here's what I don't get, Robert. The JCPOA guarantees eventually Iran will get nukes. Everybody knows the JCPOA failed. Iran is producing uranium at catastrophic levels and they could be days away from a bomb. And yet Iran is barreling ahead and refuses to compromise. Why should Israel listen to the United States and keep their hands off Iran? Well, Israel shouldn't do that, obviously. What the Biden administration is trying to do is restore the nuclear deal with Iran because Trump dropped it. And they want to show that they know better than Trump and can do everything better than the stupid amateur that they think of him as. They are the professionals. They're the experts. They know how to run foreign policy. And so they're absolutely determined to appease Iran and restore the nuclear deal at the expense of Israel, which of course, as we know from Obama's first two administrations, first two terms, they're very hostile to Israel, the people that are in the government now. And now in Obama's third term, they're just as hostile, if not more so, to Israel. So they, above all, don't want to see Israel doing something that will keep them from appeasing Iran and, in their view, showing up Trump. Boy, is that the truth. The PA, the Palestinian Authority, um, as you note frequently, pays out generous monthly stipends to imprisoned terrorists and to the families of terrorists who might have died while committing their attacks. The more serious the attack, the more Israelis that are killed, the more money the PA pays out. In other words, it pays to kill people if you're a Palestinian. The martyrs get a fortune and the descendants get the money if they didn't make it. The rumor is the PA is gonna stop this pay for slave program. Do you believe it? Not a chance. It's just window dressing to try to curry international favor, which they don't even really have to do. Because in the United States, we have the Taylor Force Act, which forbids money being given to an entity that funds terrorism, which should mean that no, not a penny of American taxpayer money goes to the Palestinian Authority. But the Biden administration has turned on the eight spigot and billions of dollars, millions of dollars at the very least are flowing to the Palestinians from American taxpayers in total defiance of the Taylor Force Act. And nobody is calling the Biden administration to account for violating the law in this way. Excellent point, Robert, and shame on the opposition in Congress for not standing up for the law that is named after the American soldier, Taylor Force, who was killed by a terrorist in Jerusalem several years ago. So every time I think about the press finally getting the story right and it becoming a factual report rather than a bias, I read a story like the one you published from Germany. So the backstory is there was a attack by a terrorist in the old city in Jerusalem. Uh, this Hamas terrorist opened fire on passerbyers with a machine gun. He killed one Israeli, he shot three others, and police finally killed him. So what did the German news say? Quote, a Palestinian was shot dead today, unquote. By Israel. It's true, but without the backstory, it sounds like cold-blooded murder. 
That's the um, idea. At, at what point does the truth matter here? The truth doesn't matter. The establishment media outlets in the United States and all over Western Europe are just propaganda arms for the hard left, hostile to Israel and hostile to the United States. And so anything that they can publish that will undermine American interests and make people hate Israel, they'll go with it, factual or not. It's pathetic and it's true. So I'm gonna ask you about two of your books. Let's first start with, did Mohammed exist? We talked about this some weeks ago. Quickly tell our guests uh, that are tuning in today what the response has been to that book. It, it's a very controversial subject. So give us a quick thumbnail of what the book's about and what kind of reaction are you getting with it? The book is an examination of the early history of Islam to evaluate the historical reliability of the records of how Islam was founded and the life of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. And it essentially finds, which other people have found in the past, that there is very little historical value to the Islamic texts about Muhammad and that Islam does not seem to have come to exist in the way that it is described as coming to exist in the canonical Islamic sources. The response to this has been a great deal of hostility, some threats, people saying that uh, I have insulted Muhammad and thus should be killed and so on. But one interesting thing that nobody has managed to do is to say that the book is wrong. And uh, as a matter of fact, there was just a fellow who made a video not long ago that was brought to my attention. And I, so I went ahead and watched it. He's purporting to refute the whole book. And what he does is he finds that in the beginning, the introductory section, uh, the book says that Muhammad had three daughters and actually he had four. And that is true. It's a mistake in the book, but it was an editorial error that came from a phrase being dropped out by mistake. It has nothing to do with the actual point of the book at all. So even if you were to grant that uh, it's just some idiotic mistake by the Islamophobic Spencer, it doesn't actually do anything to refute the substance of the book itself. So this is the kind of quality of the responses we've been getting. Yeah, it's pretty much what I expected. So I, I understand you have a new book. Let's, let's give uh, our audience a, a quick Robert Spencer book report on Robert Spencer's new book. Yeah, this is uh, called The Critical Quran. And it is an honest translation of the Quran, plus commentary that draws from the mainstream Islamic commentaries on the Quran. Because I've found over the years that when I quote the Quran, Muslims almost invariably respond, you're taking it out of context. So I go to the Islamic commentaries to show what the context is and how it's understood. The passages of the Quran are understood according to the mainstream Islamic scholars of the Quran. And so this book is designed to elucidate for people in the West who are not Muslim, what it is about Islam that gives rise to terrorism and all these other human rights abuses that we see. And it shows where they are all rooted in the Quran itself. When many other translations have obscured, often intentionally, these passages of the Quran that are violent or misogynistic or anti-Semitic and so on. Well, let me ask you this, this sounds like not only fascinating reading, but it should be required reading. I used to ask for a, a show of hands when I would speak to a large group uh, about Islam, and I'd say, how many people have read the Quran? And it would be crickets. Is your book a good place to start to educate people on what they should know? Yeah, that's the idea of it, that it's a, an essential guide. Uh, I remember years ago, uh, people saying the Quran doesn't really teach beheading, it doesn't really teach terrorism, it doesn't really teach wife beating and so on. And anytime people would quote something from the Quran, you'd find people writing in mainstream media sources denying it. And so this book shows what really is in there and how it has been understood throughout Islamic history by Muslims themselves. Well, that seems to be on the ATP required reading list. Is the book out? It'll be out in the middle of December. I just got my uh, author advanced copies recently, just a few days ago. And so uh, I can tell you, it looks very nice and it'll be available. It's on Amazon now for pre-order, Barnes and Noble for pre-order, and it'll be in bookstores in a couple of weeks. Absolutely. Thank you 
for doing that. And I'm advising all ATP family out there, coast to coast and around the world that are watching today, go get this book. You need to know who and what you're dealing with. And there's no better scholar on the subject than Robert Spencer. Robert, tell people where they can find out more about what you're doing. You mentioned where we can get the book. What about the rest of your writings? Yeah, I, uh, jihadwatch.org. I give news and commentary about jihad activity in the United States and around the world updated daily. And also this is uh, on Twitter at jihadwatchrs. And sometimes I get into some uh, Twitter wars that some people might find entertaining. And uh, also there's a Jihad Watch page on Facebook. Wonderful. Please, please, please follow him. He's the scholar. You can't get a better source on Islam around the world than Robert Spencer. Um, for those of you that didn't do it at the beginning, please sign up for our text message alert system. Simply send the word truth to 88202 on your cell phone uh, through a text message. Push send, you'll be signed up in about four or five seconds. You'll get everything from Robert Spencer and all of our other contributors absolutely for free, right in the palm of your hand. Again, for ATP Report, thank you for coming on. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Barry Nussbaum.